Call River City Hospice for your loved one's care today. River City Hospice is a compassionate, patient-centered health care provider with a unique approach to medical care and support for people at the end of life and their families. River City Hospice focuses on maintaining dignity, increasing quality of life, and providing comfort and reducing pain due to illness. Hospice care allows your loved one to be treated with dignity and respect and gives them the right to choose. Call 82-5900 today. Hope, dignity, and love. It's got to be River City Hospice. And we're back after a brief break. You're watching South Texas Crossfire. Before we jump in feet first with your Congressman Blake Farenthold, we want to thank our sponsors, River City Hospice 882-5900. Our family taking care of yours is their philosophy. Hospice, it's not what you think it is. Call today, 882-5900 to learn more. And also Vasquez Flores Home Health, backed by over 25 years of experience, Miss Vasquez RN can help see if your loved one can stay out of a nursing home. Nursing homes have their place, but also if you want to stay inside your home, peace and dignity with a provider coming in there, give her a call 881-9922. And special thanks again to the Lopez family. Uh, once again, Blake Farenthold, your congressman right here. And uh, Blake, welcome back. Good to be back. Well, uh, let me see. We were talking about gun control and, and I know that your heart goes out to those families, but really also about the mental health issues we discussed, and about a comprehensive immigration policy. But a lot of people say that's all great, the national stuff. You know, when people ask, well, Congressman Farenthold, we hear you on the national level. What about, I know you guys got uh, mail outs for the local constituents. Right. Let's talk about some of those issues that touch and concern the people out there. What sort of information is your staff and you getting out there? Well, there are a lot of ways that uh, we stay in touch. You know, I'm a communications major, radio, television, film, radio guy. So it's really important that I, I stay in touch. It's part of who I am. It's one of the reasons I'm on the show with you now. There are a lot of ways to stay in touch, and there are a lot of things that we can do for the uh, people of South Texas. First and foremost, I want to invite everybody to sign up for my website. Uh, it's farenthold.house.gov. Uh, hopefully we can get them to put that up on the screen. So. Crawling as we speak. All right. Um, and on that, you can sign up for the electronic newsletter uh, that we do pretty much once a week. Occasionally we'll miss a week, or occasionally if there's a lot going on, we'll do too. We won't sell your mail, uh, email address or anything. It's just for us to, to stay in touch with you on official matters. We've got a Twitter account uh, at twitter.com slash Love get, it. You can get to that from the... Uh, a website as well, uh, uh, and there's a, an official Facebook account that uh, you, you can do. We've got, uh, you know, I, I used to do all of that myself. I still read it. I still uh, do it. But I've actually got somebody helping me, so oh, we've right, doubled right. the output by yeah. getting a, well, getting a it, second uh, person. Yeah. If there's something misspelled in it, you know I probably did it. If everything's spelled right, <laughs> uh, we had a staff member edit it, but uh, really, uh, really enjoyed doing that. We've got a great uh, group of folks here in uh, Corpus Christi and in Victoria. Uh, we have red tape cutters, so if you're having a problem with the federal government, the VA, uh, immigration problem, getting a passport, your social security benefits, any sort of problems with the federal government, uh, you can call one of our caseworkers, uh, and uh, that would, uh, we have Victoria and here in uh, Corpus Christi, and th they can help you out with that. We have an outreach staff, we have uh, David, who just started with our office, came to us from Kiko Canseco's office in San Antonio. Uh, he's working on uh, outreach for us. Uh, we've got Bob Howder, who's the district director. We, uh, we brought Bob in from, uh, from California. We were able to give him a 16% pay raise without giving him any more money, and, just and by not having to pay the California the, the, tax. That's what exactly what I was going to say. Welcome, Bob. Yes, without state tax. And I think that Perry went over there, and I think he didn't have to go over there and recruit any Californians. People are coming over. I just talked to somebody. I'm glad you brought that up. And they said the same thing. I mean, they said, let's go look at $250,000 houses. And they said, anyway, let's go look at three-quarter million dollar houses. And that's what you'll find here, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you can, you, the housing here, Bob specifically 
told me uh, he's got a much better house for less money than he had in very much so in California yeah. he's living on the living the dream on the island well I mean I tell you but you know California is beautiful great place to visit but I don't want to pay the the taxes there no, but well and and I mean and some people are saying look Texas taxes you one way or the other toll you know if they start with toll roads and everywhere you know but there's other other things that are going on and people were kind of uh, grumbling about that but if you look at tax taxation throughout the nation I think Texas is doing pretty well and and uh, tell us some good news about about you know the shale and the health care and everything else that you're getting out there we are doing so well in Texas that's part of the message that I'm bringing to Washington DC is with a government that stays out of your way a reasonable tax structure uh, and a good work ethic uh, and low energy prices you can uh, you can do a lot the Eagleford shale and the low-cost natural gas uh, is a huge benefit to, to this area. You can see MNG Plastics is coming to Corpus Christi, new jobs there. Uh, you're seeing uh, the Tepco Pipe Company. There's another pipe company uh, like Tepco that's going into Bay City, which is in the northern part of the district that I represent. You've got Caterpillar that just opened a huge plant uh, in Victoria, uh, building excavators. Uh, and you're in, a, you're in a situation in a lot of this area where for all practical purposes, there's zero unemployment. I was talking to a, a road contractor that said, you know, you, you send me somebody, they can pass a drug test, I've got a job for them. The economic development folks in Victoria, so for all practical purposes, uh, we're at zero uh, percent unemployment because anybody who wants to have a job and pass drug tests, show up for work, uh, we can find a job for. I saw a Dairy Queen paying $18 an hour. Uh, so they're, they're, we are really in a boom in this part. Obviously, uh, we, we've still got some people suffering who, uh, you know, with, with addictions or, or aren't out looking for uh, jobs. You know, uh, some of these jobs. You know, all right, I'm. I think I might rather work in the Dairy Queen than, uh, uh, than you know, out uh, digging a ditch or building a road. But there could, there's some good jobs. Eighteen dollars an hour uh, is is a great job, and so I, you know, we're in good shape here. We got. We're booming. We've got Schlitterbahn that just broke ground here. My uh, daughter's uh, excited about that. Yeah, going to turn nine. Yeah, really happy about that. And we're, we're joking around uh, the office. What are you going to do if they uh, ask you to come out there on opening day? And oh, tear it I, up. I, 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 I go, well, I'm not taking the shirt off, but I'll, I'll slide down those hey, slides man, in a T-shirt. I'll go with you, brother. <laughs> I'll wear my Belushi College shirt. I love that. Don't worry about it. That's my trademark. I'll wear that with you. All right. Well, well, looking well, forward to that. You know, and I'm going to mention something. There's a, a dear friend of mine. I respect him, but I don't necessarily agree with him. Uh, he had on in his Facebook, uh, I think you've seen him as Riptide, uh, and said, I'm giving up. Corpus Christi is hopeless. Um, uh, you know, the, the underclass that's here, the e economics, and I'll forward you. I read it, and I thought it was very interesting analysis, historic analysis. I didn't necessarily agree that we are doing as badly as Detroit, Michigan. Listen, I grew up here. I mean. And, and we've been cursed with potential in Corpus Christi for a long time. And, you know, I used to joke when I was on the radio, Corpus Christi is where good ideas come to die. We can find. <laughs> yes, we yes, can, yes. We, you know, we, we, we can find somebody opposed to uh, apple pie in, in, in Corpus Christi. We, we have an apple pie festival here. Where is everybody going to park? Yeah. But yeah. I, I really think... Uh, that we we've, we've turned the corner on this and uh, the again uh, the energy prices are, are really driving it we're getting a lot of a lot of new jobs construction jobs uh, associated with that uh, and I've never felt more optimistic and if you think back I was in high school in the 80s from the 80s when they finished one shoreline plaza and uh, in the frost bank building there really hadn't been a significant change to our skyline until within the past three or four years. We've got the windmills that are now up in the background. Memorial Coliseum is making way for uh, a, a beautiful new park downtown. Uh, we've got uh, that, that factory that's going up in Gregory for TEPCO. We'll have M&G going up. Uh, we're seeing uh, bulldozers and cranes everywhere. This really is the biggest change that's hit this country since I was, or this area since I was a child we're starting to realize some of that potential and it's gonna benefit every single person they're gonna be more jobs 
there's going to be more opportunity. You know, no matter where you are in life, as we get these more people, these more jobs, you, you can go open your restaurant. You know, you can go open your boutique. You can start your business. You can live the American dream. You can't do that in a stagnant economy. But in an economy that's growing and booming, there's opportunity for everyone to live the American dream. Agreed. These are exciting times. Well, and, and lastly, you know, we've got a few minutes left, but the healthcare sector, you and I had this conversation. I came up there, in fact, for hospice and home health. I, I you know, advocate for the hospice as well as home health, and not necessarily because of the Affordable Care Act, but because of the dignity, the inherent intangibles you have with that. You know, the big hospital bill you get is the last few days of your life. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know what heroic measures are. I worked in ICU for years. And my wife's and, a nurse. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, my wife's a nurse too. And so what are your views on hospice? Listen, hospice, the value of hospice to families uh, and, and to patients in the you know, final months, weeks, or days of their life is, uh, is invaluable. I've, my my mother-in-law passed away uh, cancer about eight, nine years ago, and the help that the hospice gave her in her home and the help that they gave my wife and her family during that, I mean, it, it was just, it was unbelievable what they were able to do. When my grandmother passed away of cancer in, in, in the house that I'm living in now, you know, the, the, the hospice uh, staff were visiting her daily. And when, when she passed away, they helped, you know, with the, with the final arrangements and, uh, and everything. The, the care is just unbelievable. The, the people that do that, I have such admiration and, and respect for as they, you know, they get to know their patients and they know they're, in most cases, they're not going to know them for long. But they love them so passionately and put themselves on the line with every single one that they treat. It, it's just unbelievable what, uh, what the uh, professionals in a hospice organization do. I mean, their hearts are so big, I can't believe they fit in their bodies. Well, and, and, I, and I, I hope that everybody gets that message there, your fellow congressmen and senators out there, that that, uh, that reimbursement should not go away, and we really well, push yeah, they for were that. One of the, they were one of the uh, smaller cuts in Medicare. You know, the, part of the cuts that we do are designed to create efficiencies, you know, have doctors use nurses' aid or, or physician's assistants and uh, nurse practitioners, automate their practice, you know, see more patients, do, do things more efficiently. But hospice is so one-on-one -on -one oriented. It's in the home. You, know, you have your social worker. You have your uh, nurse's aide. You have your RN. All that uh, come to visit. That there, there's no way you can push that down to less, you know, less trained folks. It, and it's a very one-on-one, -on -one, very personal relationship that. You know, sure, there's some efficiencies that can be had by automating the billing and sure. scheduling it to where you see your patients, you know, in, in, in a certain order in the neighborhood, use that technology like FedEx and UPS uses. But there isn't, in my opinion, as much leeway for cuts in, uh, in hospice and improved efficiency uh, as there are in some areas of traditional medicine. That's great to hear, you know, let me tell now, you. Of course, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure my phone's going to be burning up <laughs> with, uh, right. you know, with, with, with some of the doctors saying, you know, I sure. see 40, 50 patients and a, a, a day, respect. and those are the, you know. Yeah. And our respect goes out to them. Yeah. Closing arguments, the last 30 seconds, Dave's pulling the cane on us. What, what, what do you have to tell your constituents out there? Please don't hesitate to uh, get in touch with my office. Uh, Corpus Christi office, 884-2222. All the information is at farenthal.house.gov. Uh, I'm here to represent you, and I'm here to help you. All right. Well, Blake Farenthal, your congressman, uh, right here in the Coastal Band, and we want to thank you for coming on. It's been an honor. My thank pleasure. you so much. We're out of time. Dave, sorry we ran over. Thank you all, and God bless.